how often are you in the Word of God that transforms you? In Romans 12, 1 and 2, he says, I call you near to listen. By the mercies of God, present your bodies as living sacrifices, which is holy and acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service, meaning your spiritual service of worship, that you may prove what is that good, acceptable, and perfect will of God. I mean, step one. And don't be forced into the mold of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. And as he says in Ephesians 5, 46, he says, By the washing of the water by the word, this is how our flesh is sanctified. As the writer of Hebrews in 9, 13, and 14 says that, if the blood of bulls and goats and the sprinkling of, an, of the ashes of a heifer, sprinkling the unclean, sanctifies to the purification of the flesh, he said, how much more shall the blood of Jesus, who through the eternal spirit offered himself without spot, talking about the spot of the flesh, purge or purify, sanctify your minds from dead works, to serving to the living God and you know so we gotta we we have to be transformed and it and as he reveals in uh, chapter ten, 9 and 10 he says for the in in 9 he's talking about the blood of bulls and goats not not being able to make the the comer there and he who did the service perfect in regards to conscience and then in verse 10 verse 1 says for the law having a shadow of things to come as Paul said in uh uh, Romans uh, 2.20 that the law having a form of the knowledge and of the truth and that word knowledge that's used there you know is somehow I'm, I'm mistook that for the Greek word with the reference number 1922 but it's 1108 the same one that's used in 2 Corinthians 10.5 Casting down imaginations and every lofty thing that lifts itself against the knowledge of God. So here in 2.20 he's saying the law has a form of the knowledge and of the truth. The same truth that the, Paul and the writer of Hebrews both said in 2 Timothy 3.7 Some are ever learning never able to come to the knowledge of the truth. That's in contrast to the knowledge in 320 the knowledge of sin no flesh shall be justified or made righteous by the works of the law for by the law is the knowledge of sin it's talking about the conscious awareness of sin and he describes that in chapter 7 because he says for i had not known sin by but by the commandment you know and and as he says in first corinthians 15 56 that the sting of death is sin, but the strength of law, or the strength of sin is the law. And we have to see what he's saying here for the law having a shadow of the things of of the of the good things to come. Not the very image of those things. by those sacrifices made every year continually is ever able to make those coming near perfect and he's talking about the conscience and, and that being because uh, he's talking about uh, in chapter 9 verse uh, 9 <clears throat> verse 8 the Holy Spirit thus signifying that the way into the holiest of all was not yet made manifest because it was only the high priest alone that entered in 
to make atonement for the sins of the people. He says, in which were offered both gifts and sacrifices that could not make him that did the service perfect as pertaining to the conscience. Well, here he is saying that for the law having a shadow of the good things to come, not the very image of the, those things, the, ver the form, the form, the image of those things can never with those sacrifices which they offer year by year continually make the comers thereunto perfect for then would they not have ceased to be offered because that the worshippers once purged talking about purified quenched should have had no more conscience of sin but in those sacrifices there is a remembrance ma a, again made every year of sins he says, for it is not possible that the blood of bulls and the goats should take away sin. And that's what John in his first letter to chapter 3 says that we know that he was manifest to take away our sin and in him is no sin. <clears throat> I mean, and this is so significant that first of all, as he says in 1 Corinthians 15, 36, full, the body you sow is not given life unless it dies. And we need to understand that that's that living sacrifice. That's our spiritual worship every day to offer the will of our flesh up. And that's what he's saying in Galatians 5, 16. He says, I say them walk in the spirit and you will not fulfill or carry out the old desires of the flesh. You know, so we got to understand that putting ourselves back under the law puts ourselves back underneath the weak and beggarly elements of the world and he describes that in Galatians 3 and 4 and you know Galatians 3 has been twisted out of context to give a license to sin but grace is not an excuse for sin it's our power over sin and Paul describes that in Romans chapter 6 verse 3 to 4 he says do you not know that you were baptized into Jesus Christ not into a trinity or something else he were baptized into his death buried with him in baptism and verse 7 he says the one who is dead is freed from sin justified from sin made free from sin and in verse 14 he says sin shall no longer have dominion over you for you are no longer under the law but under grace, under, under God's unmerited favor. And verse 18, having been freed from sin, you become the slaves of righteousness. I mean, he left it without any question, but no one ever, people ignore those things because they're, I guess they're condemned by those things rather than to cling to the truth and, and have faith in what is written concerning what Jesus came and accomplished for us. You know, it is his word that the truth of his word, as he says in Ephesians uh, uh, chapter He says that you put off concerning the former conversation the old man which is corrupt according to its deceitful desires and be renewed in the spirit of your mind. And that's the same thing he's saying in Romans 12 1. The only way that we do that is by putting the flesh to death. In Galatians 5 16 he says, I say then walk in the spirit and you will not fulfill or carry out the evil desires of the flesh. For the flesh envies against the Spirit. And he's talking about the Holy Spirit we were sealed with when we were baptized into Jesus Christ and into his death and called upon the name of the Lord to receive the promise of the Spirit. 
because it's not given automatically. Even Jesus, after he was baptized by John the Baptist, it's recorded that immediately coming up out of the water, he prayed, and the holy and the heavens were opened, and the Holy Spirit descended upon him in the form of a dove, as a testimony to John to give witness that this was the Christ, the Son of God. And so we got to understand that even Paul in in uh, Acts 19. Uh, one through six when he's coming through the upper coast into Ephesus and he finds certain disciples and he asked them if they had received the Holy Spirit since they believed I mean first of all I mean this the things are just overlooked and it's just because as as Paul calls Satan the god of this world dueling the senses of people's minds to overlook the simple things that really give us insight into what's spoken. He says, uh, have you received the Spirit since you believed? They didn't even know that there was. Their reply was, we didn't even know that there was a Holy Spirit. He's, and Paul's response to that was then, unto what baptism then were you baptized? Because even though obviously it's not automatically given by the way he starts out his conversation, but it should have been something that they knew by the proclamation of the gospel proclaimed to them when they believed and were baptized. Because first of all, it, it doesn't say anything about baptism in the beginning, but Paul, when he finds out that they don't even know anything about the Holy Spirit, he was like, unto what baptism then were you baptized? Well, nothing said about baptism before that. You know, so, I mean, people that, I mean, it's like the lame man by the pool of Bethesda. You know, when Jesus finds him, in the temple later after he healed them after the lame man succumbed to the Jews to observe the Sabbath day and put his bed back down after Jesus commanded him to pick up his bed and walk on the Sabbath day we, only, we need to understand he's the prophet like unto Moses and Jehovah our God said him shall they hear and everything that he shall say for he shall speak everything that I command him for I will put my words in his mouth as Jesus said I can do nothing to myself what I hear him say, those things I say. What I see him do, those things I do. The Father works hitherto, I work hitherto. He wasn't just, you know, previously doing whatever he wanted. He was doing what the Holy Spirit that he was sealed with when he was baptized by John the Baptist led him to do. As, as Paul said, those that are led by the Spirit of God are the ones born of God, Romans 8.14. You know, I mean, we need to under we need to understand some of this stuff. Cuz Jesus said by their fruit you shall know them. You know, not by anything else. And what are those fruits? It, and let me let me finish this cuz he says and be renewed in the spirit of your mind that you and that you put on the new man after God which is created in righteousness and holiness of the truth and in Ephesians 4 or in Galatians 4 19 he says my little children whom I travail in birth again until Christ be formed in you I mean we need to understand what being Christ being formed in you is having the mind of Christ and he describes that in 1st Corinthians chapter 2 in uh, verse 16 Because he just got through talking about those who are spiritual. But he that is spiritual judges, and it means to examine in a forensic sense all things. Yet he himself is judged of no man. For who has known the mind of the Lord that he may instruct him, but we have the mind of Christ? And obviously, he's not saying they do. But he's saying those who are spiritual do. 
because look what he says, and I, brethren, cannot speak unto you as unto spiritual, but as unto carnal, even as unto babes in Christ, for I have fed you with milk, and not with meat, for hitherto you were not able to bear it, neither yet now are you able, for you, for you are yet carnal, for whereas among you there is envying, strife, divisions, are you not carnal and walk as men? For one while one says, I am of Paul, and another, I am of Apollos, are you not carnal? Who then is Paul, and who is Apollos? But ministers by whom you believed, even as the Lord gave to every man. I have planted, Apollos watered. This means that Paul has baptized them, because even as the Apostle Paul said, I've not been sent to baptize. And you got to understand when you read Acts 18 that Priscilla and Aquila heard Apollos preaching Jesus Christ crucified and risen from the dead in the synagogues there but only knew John's baptism. And it says they took him aside and explained the way to them more perfectly. Well, then you come into chapter 9, and the testimony is given that he's find, Paul was finding certain disciples that he had baptized unto John's baptism. Well, in chapter 18, if you look right after Priscilla and Aquila explained the way to, to Apollos more perfectly, he departed and went into Corinth. The example of Paul is given is not hypothetical of Apollos. I mean, so I mean, we need to understand that. I mean, we need we need to stop assuming and stop being contentious. I mean, just be. It's like baptism. Look at Acts nineteen one through six when Paul finds them. He, he finds certain believers, certain, certain disciples of Christ. And he asked them if they had received the Holy Spirit since they believed. Because So first of all, Paul says in Romans 8.10, If Christ be any, the body is dead because of sin. And there's only one way that we put the body to death, and that is in baptism as he describes in Romans chapter 6, verses 3 and 4, in Colossians chapter 2. I mean, we need to understand that. I mean, that... He says, have you received the Spirit since you believed? That means that what he said in Romans 10, for... You must believe with your whole heart that God raised him from the dead and confess him Lord. Nothing said of baptism, but it's implied. They already knew. I mean, and we need to under, we need to understand that. I mean, because even in Acts 19, nothing said of baptism, but it's implied. Because he says, one well, to what baptism then were you baptized when they said that they had never heard of the Holy Spirit? Because look at look at Peter on the day of Pentecost in Acts 2.38. When certain Jews were cut to the heart by the preaching of Jesus Christ by Peter, they asked him, What must what should we do? Peter said, Repent every one of you and be baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus for the forgiveness of sins, and you shall receive the promise of the Holy Spirit. But because it doesn't say that every time, people have twisted the message of the gospel. I mean, we need to understand that. I mean, we got to see... Don't be ignorant of Satan's ways of deceiving and pulling people off of the truth. I mean that I mean that's my whole point. And the only way that you are gonna be transformed, the only way that you are going to be your flesh is gonna be sanctified 
won is by putting it to the death but through the faith of Christ Jesus if Christ dwells in you his spirit and his his spirit should be bearing witness with our spirit that we belong to God Romans 8 15 there's no question and and John speaks the same thing you know that if we are his his spirit is given witness to us that we are his you know there, it's not a guessing game and it's not blind faith what is faith is is that Christ dwells in us because as he says in 2nd Corinthians chapter 5 he says to be at home in the body is to be absent from the Lord Jesus for we walk by faith, not by sight. It is the Holy Spirit of promise that we are sealed with. As he says in Romans chapter 8 verse 9, or in verse, let's go to verse 8 because he says, well, let's, let's just go back up because he says those that are after the flesh mind the things of the flesh, set the affections of their mind on the things of the flesh. They that are after the Spirit set their mind, set the affections of their mind on the things of the Spirit. That same Greek word translated mind is translated affections in Colossians chapter 3 verse 2. And in Philippians chapter 3, it, that, same, that same Greek word is used again, you know, those who mind earthly things whose God is their belly that Greek word translated mind earthly things is talking about setting the affections of their mind on earthly things as he says in Colossians chapter 3 verse 1 if you therefore be risen with Christ set your affections on the things above not on the things below set your affections on the things above he says, for you are dead and your life is hid with Christ in God. I mean, we need to understand the revelation of that. Our life is, we are sealed with the Holy Spirit. He says, our life is hid with Christ in God. Our life is hid with Christ in the Holy Spirit. We are raised up together with him in the heavenly places far above all principality and power. I mean, we need to understand our place of authority. We're no, we, we no longer have an inferior position to sin and to evil. We need to understand that. And, you know, and it's not a matter of getting puffed up and arrogant it's just walking in that authority and walking in obedience you know amen